Hello, so today we're going to be playing some of the Sin demo. Uh, Sin is an FPS that was released around the same time as Quake 2 and Half-Life. I think probably just after Quake 2, it's like 98-99. Uh, it's, uh, in terms of visuals, it's pretty similar. It's got those so the same sort of uh, clunky character models that the, the FPSs of that era all have. Uh, the gameplay is a bit more well, the gameplay is pretty samey too, but it does focus more on cinematic elements and it's more story driven. Um, I'm going to be playing as myself today. You may have met him, he's a nice guy. Uh, I'm going to skip the next menu so you can just skip to the intro because there is quite a, an annoying sound on the menu that I can't seem to get rid of and it will probably hurt your ears quite a lot. So we'll just skip to the intro here. So like I say, this is more story driven. Got a nice intro cutscene here with the in-game engine. I don't know if the game had FMV visuals as well. Or FMV cinematics. Any word on how many there are? There's an undisclosed number of assailants with hostages still inside. They're heavily fortified and deeply entrenched already. Get the assault chopper ready. Already done that, boss. <laughs> good work. What's so the that, word from our team in that sector? That's pretty good. It's not good uh, like I say, it's pretty cartoonish. Uh, I think you play uh, John Blade uh, as a single player. I think his name's John Blade. Yeah, that's him. This guy, anyway. Uh, uh, I think you're like a private cop or a rent cop, something like that. Uh, and you, you just go after bad guys, sort of thing. So yes, it's very cartoonish, very, very simplistic. There's no, no grey involved in the story. You're the good guy going after the bad guys. And I like this little intro cinematic. Sort of pulls you into the action. There we go. Hey, that was a good shot. That's These guys are bad, by the way. Just so you know. Never even saw it coming. <laughs> Might have been hard to realise, but they are bad guys. <laughs> it's a helicopter. So we have these little turrets on the roof uh, that we need to get rid of. Blake, try for a rooftop landing at the bank. I'll keep an eye on what's going on inside the bank with security. So I think this is, I don't think this is the first game to do turret sequences in the in-game engine like it's doing, but I think it's one of the first. I think we've, we've killed everybody too soon. The game's trying to figure out what to do. Okay. I guess a nice meld of different... Sorry, I'm just waiting for that. Uh, it's a nice meld of different story-driven gameplay and visual aspects, like that whole you being on you starting on the helicopter, not starting level, and then having that turret sequence, and then once you've completed the turret sequence, you then get pushed into the action. That was pretty innovative for the time. I think, like, uh, Quake 2 and I think, I know Half-Life did, ha did have some uh, moments where you could use turrets, but I think this is one of the first games where it was, it was part of a cinematic element. And as you probably know, turret sequences are pretty standard in games these days. Standard in shooters, FPS or third person. So unfortunately this game doesn't like giving us health, so we will be 
Uh, well, we may well be struggling. Not sure why, to be honest. Uh, oh, okay, maybe that's it. Uh, one of the things I realised when I was trying the game earlier, uh, you actually have to pick up items sometimes. Like you can pick up ammo and stuff. So I don't know, maybe... Maybe that's what I missed out on before, maybe they're all carrying health. And I just haven't been picking it up. So this is actually uh, the, the the piece of roof we blew up earlier. If you remember in the turret sequence we blew up some explosives and they created holes in the ceiling. If you don't blow up those holes, I don't think these, these holes in the ceiling appear, which is, which is a nice touch. We can actually walk through it so it doesn't make any difference. But it's uh, an interesting way in which the, the things you do on screen affect the actual gameplay. No. Yeah, so it seems as though picking up armor off no. these guys is an important uh, aspect no, of the gameplay. No. Oh, there's one of our choppers. These guys are pretty useless, these are our allies. They will do almost nothing. I think they're actually a reskin of these bad guys. Looks like the same character model. Same sort of proportions as well, I think, so yeah. I guess it must be. Yeah, that's another interesting no. aspect. Actually, having allies who can fight alongside you. They don't do very much in this level, though. They just sort of hang around this intro area. Uh, and then, once you save them, they run off. Damn, it's Blade. Don't just stand there. Go kill him. Another nice aspect is that uh, this is where we need to go, but you actually have two ways you can come. This way we came, or if you go straight up in that first room, that first large hall we were in, uh, you actually come to here. And that leads you to where we just were. I mean, it's a small area, and it's only the two routes, but it's a nice touch as well for a game made when it was. I think he's saying no to more armor then. No. What is that with all no. these bald guys attacking me? Is it because I've got lovely drugs? Is that it? Oh, okay, I think that's actually a key item. Oh, there's some armor. That's pretty cool. No. So you can actually save the hostages as well. You just have to, once, once the area is clear, just hit use on them. No. I'm gonna just run off. No, no. He's not pleased about us trying to pick up armor, is he? No. Yeah, I'm generally impressed by this. So it's not. I mean. Even at the time, I don't think it's the sort of game I was really into. I liked FPS's, but I, like the story doesn't really appeal to me. I quite like Quake 2. I don't know. I like I like the visuals of Quake 2 a lot, and uh, I did really love Half Life. Though I didn't play it at the time of release, I played it like a few years later. I loved the story-driven elements, even if I didn't necessarily like the style. Uh Don't let him get through here. We need the ball to It's in 
Yeah, he's yourself. a gun to us, not fair. No, I think we already found the uh, the key. That was the item we picked up. Uh, just trying to think, actually. Like, I, in terms of FPSs, what did I like? Is it all about the... Did I like stories? Hmm. I know I liked uh, Jeep Nukem 3D. I also liked uh, Doom, Quake 2. I think I ended up. Oh, nice little shotgun. I think I ended up liking the story driven games. Like, I, there was this whole period where I went out of. Uh, I, I just stopped being interested in FPSs. Uh, and then I came back into FPSs. When games like uh, a few years after games like Fear and stuff like that got released, I remember I hadn't played any FPSs for absolute years because I, I, I went off them like just after Quake Two because I quite liked Quake, Quake Two, but then I I didn't like stuff like Soldier of Fortune because it just it, the game just seemed way too violent and just pointless sort of thing. No, no. There was no I like shooting more, I like the shooting games, but I like there to be a point to it. Oh, that's really cool. Didn't know you could use monitors. It's a nice touch. So that's where we're going. Yeah, that's the same. Let's just unlock these. That turns off the, uh, the gun turrets. And full full. Okay. I don't know what this does. So we just need to go back to where we were in the office. Uh, and I'll go back to the vault door and open it. That code. I don't know really, I guess I just went off FPS's because I'm more of a story person in general. Uh, I, I, I don't know, it's weird because like Doom was like one of the first FPS's I played and I loved Doom but like there's almost no story in Doom. But I guess for its time it had the amount of story that people expected, <laughs> i.e. no story. Uh, but it's weird. But then I liked Doom Nukem 3D more because it was funny, you could interact with the world a lot more and it, it, it was well designed. I think I went off FPS's when stuff like Soldier of Fortune was released because it... I'll just kill these guys. I'm picking up thermal activity in the abandoned building next door. No. Follow the tunnel and check it out. I think I went off Roger, uh, uh, I'm going shooters and stuff like that. Wait, wait for some backup. No time to wait. I'm going in. Oh, he's going in. Once stuff like Soldier of Fortune released because I don't know. If, I, I vaguely remember playing the demo as a kid for Soldier of Fortune and just feeling bored. Cause yeah, it did a really good job of like uh, simulating all the ways you can shoot somebody, but at the same time. There was no point to it, at least for me, so it didn't feel interesting. I like the I like the the violence in Doom and in Duke Nukem because there's a really cool story attached to them, and uh, stuff like Soldier of Fortune just didn't really appeal to me. I guess I just missed this as well. I didn't really have any money. I was just a kid when this was released, so I couldn't really get into it. But yeah, this is this has been decent. Oh, okay. I think that's the end. But yeah, that was surprisingly decent. I didn't expect it to be as, as fun as it was. And to have so many cool features. Like the turret sequences and the the cameras and the interactive screens. That's all really cool. But yeah, that was the uh, Sin demo. I hope that was fun to watch. It was pretty fun to play.